Welcome to another episode of the Carolyn Glick Show. Um, on October 7th, uh, it wasn't just that 1,200 Israelis were murdered. It's also, of course, that 240 Israelis were taken hostage by Hamas. Um, and the twin goals, essentially, of freeing the hostages and uh, eradicating Hamas have been the center of the war effort ever since. Um, and uh, We've heard a lot from about the hostages. We saw the uh, hostage uh, for terrorist steal that went through uh, a week and a half ago that brought uh, the rescue of uh, over 100 hostages, including most of the children, except for the children of the Bibas family. Um, and uh, we still have 17 women in Gaza uh, being held hostage, mainly uh, young. Uh, and the rest of the 137 hostages in uh, Gaza are men. And um, we've been hearing uh, various things from the hostages' families about how they feel about the government and about the, what should be done. And I wanted to talk today uh, with uh, Tzvika Mol, who is the father of Eitan Mol, 23, who is one of the hostages being held in um, Gaza. So I was very happy. Um, that Svika could make time to join us today uh, to discuss uh, his son and um, the thinking behind uh, how his family is looking at the war and the twin goals of the war of rescuing the hostages, including, of course, his son, um, Eitan, and also about uh, eradicating the enemy. So first of all, thank you so much, Svika, uh, for joining me today on the program. I, I really appreciate your time. Thank you, Caroline. Hanukkah Sameach. Hanukkah Sameach. Um, can you, can, why don't we start uh, with you telling us a bit about uh, Eitan. Who is, who is your son, Eitan? Yes. So we were living in Kiryat Arba, me and uh, my wife, Efrat, and uh, we have uh, eight kids. And uh, Efrat and uh, Eitan is uh, our oldest son, uh, 23 years old. Uh, after army, he's a combat fighter. And uh, before the before the war, he used to work as a, in in a copy shop in uh, Jerusalem, and in a security team, um, in uh, from time to time. And in Simchat uh, Torah, he he, wa he was in the security team in the Nova Festival. And in uh, six six thirty in the morning, when the attack they began. Aitan uh, uh, and the uh, friends were yeah, uh, were uh, rescued um, uh, injured people, and after a couple of hours, they uh, they uh, they find uh, about twenty civilians, uh, which were uh, hiding in the, in, the, in the garbage and the, under uh, burning the cars and in the bushes, and they took them and they they created a. Uh, a uh, security ring uh, for these uh, civilians, and and they began to to uh, to escape from this uh, area. About uh, two thirty uh, afternoon, Eitan and uh, and best friend uh, Eliakim Livman from uh, Kiryat Arba uh, saw uh, two bodies. They uh, they went to see what's going on, and they they saw that they were, uh, were murdered. So they decided to to took the the bodies um, with them, but it it uh, probably it was uh, difficult to to carry to carry the bodies and to and to keep running. So they decided to to bury the the, the bodies. In a pit that they uh, they uh, were find uh, before, and so they they took one of the bodies and and buried it in the, in that pit, and uh, and uh, went uh, to take uh, the other body, and then they were uh, shooting and missiles and they were gone. All this story I heard from uh, a witness, one one of the security team. Uh, who saw all all of this uh, all, all this uh, uh, story, and uh, and tell me. His name is uh, Moshe, uh, 
that just made Aliyah from uh, Belgium. Amazing. So your son actually saved the lives of, of 20 people at the Nova Festival, and then he and, and his friend Eliashiv uh, Liebman uh, went back and they found the two bodies of the women, and they they tried to rescue them so they wouldn't be stolen uh, to Gaza. And that was when they were captured? Yes, more than 20. Yeah, it was Eitan and Eliakim. More than 20. Because in, in, the, in, in the morning, in the, in the beginning of the attack, they, they find a, um, a little vehicle, like uh, in Hebrew it's called a tractoron. So they... Uh, it's they, an they, ATV in English, an all-terrain vehicle. Yes, ATV, yes. They, they, they took this ATV and they, uh, they evacuate uh, injured people um, to another area, which was with, uh, with uh, ambulances and, uh, and, uh, and uh, police. So it's, 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 more than, uh, it's more than 20. I think it's uh, about uh, 80, okay? About 80, yes, 80 people. It's an amazing hero. And, and it was at the time, according to the eyewitness, that they uh, were trying to get the second body to bury her, uh, that, uh, that, they were, that they were seized, that they were taken. Yes, and then in the, in the, in the, in the, um, Tuesday morning, um, uh, me and uh, Eliyahu Livman, uh, we decided to go to go to to the south to look to look for our our uh, kids. So uh, Eliyahu Eliyahu uh, uh, didn't want us to be in a in a day in a, in a dangerous area. So he, he went alone with this uh, Moshe, and they they find uh, the, the bodies. They find the bodies, the, the, these two bodies, and also, also um, the 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 army and the police uh, evacuated all the all the bodies which were uh, which were uh, grounded there. They they left these two bodies because they didn't find they didn't found it them. So because uh, they were buried, yes, yes. So it's a it's a miracle. They 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 could uh, st- stay there for for <laughs> for uh, hundreds of years. Wow, that, that it's an incredible story. And and uh, and uh, Eliashiv uh, Ligman's father, of course, is uh, is the mayor of Kiryat Arba, and he's also a hero of Israel. Yes, Eliakim. It's not Eliashiv. It's Eliakim. Yes, Eliakim. Yes. Eliyahu is uh, the mayor of Kiryat Arba. Can you tell me a little bit about Kiryat Arba? Because I know, I mean, the thing that that uh, maybe our viewers know, maybe they don't. Kiryat Arba is the town <clears throat> next to the city of Hebron, um, and it's gotten, uh, you know, the, all of the people who want to demonize the settlers, the Jews who live in Judea and Samaria. You know, they they have demonized Kiryat Arba. They have demonized the Jewish community of Hebron. But I mean, you guys are are a community of incredible uh, strength and 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 spirit. I mean, you know, the, it just seems like everybody in Kiryat Arba is a hero. I mean, it, it's an sort of an amazing story because Kiryat Arba is a predominantly, not entirely, religious community, and um, the 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 uh, party goers at the Nova Festival were. Largely, although not entirely, very secular, um, and the and it was the boys from Kiryat Arba that were handling the whole security uh, in uh, the Novo Festival, and the young men who were there. I mean, they we've heard stories about Svika and uh, Eliakim, and uh, we heard from the head of the security uh, group, um, uh, Fetterman. Uh, you know, they they saved hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people there that morning, and all they were armed with were their. Some of them weren't armed at all, right? I mean, was your son armed? No, he wasn't. No. So, what what kind of community is Kiryat Arba that you you know? <laughs> it's an it's, it's an amazing place. Yes. So uh, we we uh, we lived in uh, we're living in Kiryat Arba for twenty four years. And uh, and uh, we are uh, about eight thousand people in Kiryat Arba, uh, okay, of uh, Jews, of course, and thirty percent 
of the people of Kiryat Arba are not religious. Okay? Are not religious. But in Kiryat Arba, you, you have to be hero. <laughs> okay? Because we, we are getting stones and Molotov cocktails and shooting, okay, for 24 years. But when we got married, we decided, we asked, we were, we were asked, asked ourselves, Brits will, will be important for Am Israel to live. And we decided to live in Kirat uh, Our parents lived in, in Tel Aviv. And it was difficult for, for us to raise our eight, uh, our eight kids alone in Kirat But we, we decided to, to do the best for Am Israel. So I think that I'm, I'm not a, a special guy from Kirat Arba. <laughs> we are all, all of us are, uh, are, um, talking like, like I'm talk. And we, we, the, this, uh, this, uh, uh, situation, uh, this, uh, um, and, um, uh, this, uh, um, the, I would just say the, the, the air, the air of Hebron made us, made us to be heroes and, uh, and uh, we are trying to, to do the best for Am Israel. I think that that it, it will come a day that that the people of Israel will appreciate our our uh, the, our the, the donation to Am Israel. Well, I, I certainly appreciate it. How are you guys? How how do you how how do you live knowing that your son is in the hands of these? These monsters. So we, we as a family, we as a family be, before the war, we are a very, uh, a very uh, happy and optimistic family. If you will come today to my house, you can you can meet a very happy and uh, and uh, an optimistic family. We are we are playing and kidding, and we decided to be happy, although although we. Our our son is uh, uh, is hostage. Okay, we we don't want to to give a price to to Hamas. Okay, Hamas said uh, kidnap our son. We are not going to 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 give him another price. We are not going to be sad. We are not going to be poor, and we are not going to to to, to cry. We are we we are strong. Okay. We we understood that we 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 have to be strong for the people of Israel because all the eyes of the people of Israel are following us. They want to see what's going on, what's uh, going on with the uh, the uh, the, host- the hostages' families, and we are. I think that we are uh, doing our duty because we love our nation. Okay. But it's it's you know I guess I guess a lot of people feel um, that there's a contradiction between the goal of eradicating Hamas and the goal of rescuing the hostages because um, every every moment that the hostages remain in Gaza their lives are imperiled and it takes time to win the war uh, and so you have among the hostages families you have. A, a very um, large group of families that are demanding that the government just um, follow Hamas's demands and accept a ceasefire, uh, free all of the terrorists from Israeli uh, prisons uh, in order to get uh, the hostages back. And then, you know, there's there are other groups that, like like your family, that are saying no. Um, how do you how do you view the situation on I think it's called the the hostages uh, steering committee of the families of the hostages that that's the main group uh, that's being organized by the uh, uh, PR uh, PR guy Ronen Sur who was one of the leaders of the uh, uh, of the of the anti Netanyahu protests over the past year. Yes. Well, I want to, to tell you that there is um, n- nobody knows, okay, how many families uh, uh, support ceasefire, okay. 
the I think that that there are, there are about fifteen families that want a cease, ceasefire, and we are we are uh, about fifteen families too. Okay, so so the most of the families uh, uh, didn't say a word since October seven. Okay, they they didn't uh, write anything in our uh, WhatsApp group. Okay. So we 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 we're not uh, we we don't know them, okay? We we don't know uh, where who they are, and um, but they they um, these the fifteen families want Israel to to make a ceasefire, and um, they're very very uh, noisy, okay? And they are doing uh, all this. Uh, um, uh, uh, demonstrations. Demonstrations. Yes, demonstrations, and they um, they are um, doing all these uh, posters and uh, in the, in the in the streets and uh, in the media. But we 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 don't have so much money, okay, to to do all of that. They have a lot of money, okay. Unfortunately, we uh, we found we found out that. That uh, this uh, this uh, uh, group in uh, in uh, Tel Aviv, uh, this group, Ronen uh, Tzur group in Tel Aviv, uh, are um, are uh, a part of the of the Kaplan uh, of the Kaplan group. The Kaplan group are it's they call themselves a Kaplan Brigade, and th- that's the group that was sort of formed around former Prime Minister Ehud Barak and Shikma Bressler and. Um, former Defense Minister Moshe Alom and their job, as they've seen it over the past year, is to uh, do everything that they can in order to um, uh, overturn the results of the of the uh, 2022 elections uh, through civil disobedience, through mass protests, through uh, general to, for refusing to serve in the IDF, and all the other things that we've we've spoken about in the world before October 6th on this show, and, and Ronen Sur was with them in these groups, and they called themselves the Kaplan Brigade, or the Kaplan Force, and uh, and so they, they sort of latched on to the hostage crisis as a means, as a sort of a as sort of a lever in order to now maintain through other means uh, their calls for for Netanyahu to resign, for his government to be overthrown. Yes, at this time you can see in uh, in the site of uh, Restart Israel. This is the site of the Kaplan Brigade. You can see the uh, the, the the group of Ronen Tzu in this in this site. It's amazing. Okay, and and, uh, and we we were uh, very frustrated to to find it. And I told them, I told them, if you are going to to keep with uh, with the with the Kaplan Brigade, okay, I cannot I cannot stand with, with you, okay, because Kaplan Brigade, I think they they did a terrible thing in uh, in the, the past year. Because I mean, you guys had like they they demanded a meeting with the War Cabinet. It was last last week. Uh, and and the reports that came out of that meeting, which lasted for a very long time, was that they they were trying to uh, beat up uh, uh, Bensi Liebman. Uh, I mean, what happened at that meeting? Eliyahu, Eliyahu Liebman, yes. Uh, sorry, Eliyahu Liebman. Yes. So it was it was a, a terrible meeting between the families and the, and the cabinet. And the the war the the the, the row were uh, 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 two fronts, okay. One front were, were, was between the families. Families uh, were were shouting uh, each other, okay, because there are some families that uh, th- which uh, that think that that uh, that uh, only and only their agenda is uh, considered. But uh, and when when uh, when uh, uh, when other family uh, yeah, is saying something else, so they are not allowed to to say uh, another things, okay? 
and th this war one uh, one front, um, and uh, the other uh, front was between the families and the cabinet. Okay, it was very very. Um, it, it it was t terrible. I was I w I was so uh, so um, so embarrassed to, to be there, and when when they were uh, shouting to to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. And after two hours and about two two hours and a half, I I um, I went away. Okay. But before I I went, I uh, I get close to to the cabinet uh, um, table, and I said to 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 them that I support them, and I said I said uh, to to them to be strong and to, to keep with the war. Until they they will crush Hamas, and and did you get attacked for having said that by the other other hostages' families, or did they not hear you? Or no, they did not hear me because they they were fighting. Unfortunately, Gee, I'm so sorry that everybody has to go through this. It's it's unbelievable the way that uh, people are are capitalizing on other people's suffering. It, it's just horrible. And and when you look at the way that the government has been handling. The hostage crisis. So, I mean, how do how do you see it? Where, where do you, what what sort of grade, I guess, would you give the government in terms of handling this? Nobody has any experience with a hostage crisis of this magnitude. I don't think in any place in the world, certainly not being held by by the likes of Hamas. Yes. So, when we saw that we we cannot speak our, our values and thoughts, we established a Tkuma Forum. And we we support we support the the cabinet and the government to keep the war and to try everything to uh, to to uh, to rescue the hostages. Um, and th there is no one family from the hostages families that are uh, specialist uh, um, about the um, with the hostages. Okay. Okay, I, I hope you understand me. And we are we, we support the, the cabinet because they're the 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 best specialist specialist about uh, about war about uh, hostages. Okay, and they are doing the best they can. And the the the, the second thing that we. We ask the the cabinet and the government to 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 cope with the hostages um, according to to the to the uh, the security of Am Israel. Okay, so the 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 rescue of this of the of the hostages is not is not cannot be considered okay um, without a, a national view. I think that you said in a speech last night that I saw a snippet of on television that you were explaining that actually it isn't just 137 Israelis that are being held hostage by Hamas. It's actually 7 million Israeli Jews who are being held hostage by Hamas. Can you give a little bit of background to that? Because it's I think it's a, it's a key point in understanding how you view your son's specific personal captivity in Gaza and also how you see the way that the two wars, the war to rescue the hostages and the war to eradicate Hamas being uh, interwoven, being being tied to one another. Yes. So in the past 12 years, okay, we were kidnapped by Hamas. Hamas uh, the, the, the decides when we, we will sleep good or bad, okay? Where Israel is the only the only uh, 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 state in the globe that allow the the terrorists to shoot in uh, uh, about two thousand missiles on average every year. Okay, so there are not uh, two hundred and forty uh, hostages. There are seven million hostages here in Hamas, unfortunately. So we. We um, we uh, we have to force Hamas to realize that we 
we made a change okay we are we are uh, now now after the October 7 we are not going to give up we are going to win this war it's the first time for decades that Israel is saying that is that uh, uh, that we are going to win okay we are going to win we don't want only silence we want to win this war we want to to destroy Hamas okay I didn't hear this uh, this word words for for decades okay in my uh, service in a uh, in uh, in IDF okay and now I'm really very very happy to hear our uh, our um, cabinet and government uh, saying this these uh, words, and we are seeing it in uh, in Gaza, okay? That uh, that uh, IDF destroy Gaza and killed terrorists, and it, it's wonderful. We we are very happy to to to, to see that. And and when you when you talk about the individual, um, in the context of a nation, I mean, you know, the, it it when I wrote against the Gilad Shalit uh, deal from what was it like two thousand and eleven or something like that, yes. I said, you know, uh, we know we're guaranteed that this deal is going to kill many many Israelis when you 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 let out a thousand. 28 hostages, hundreds of them are actually murderers from jail, you're guaranteeing. And I said, the only difference between Gilad Shalit and the people who are going to die as a result of this deal is that we know his name, but we don't know their names. And so their families don't get a vote on this because they don't know that their destiny has already been sealed if we take this deal. And here, and and yet everybody could understand why Gilad Shalit's parents were saying, we want our son home. He was serving in the IDF. He was kidnapped as an IDF soldier. And you guys have to bring him home. And um, and 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 so it, it's like, well, if the state is failing, then worry about the individuals. But if you worry about the individuals, then you're guaranteeing that the state will fail, right? I mean, that that's the whole problem here. Right. I think you're right that uh, we know Gilad Shalit okay and we don't know the name and the faces of uh, of the Jews that are going to be killed okay but we we surely know that that after after all these uh, deals that uh, terrorists uh, were uh, were uh, go out freed were were, were freed Yes, um, we saw that they they uh, they uh, start to to kill to kill Jews. So we we can uh, truly said say that that um, that if we will allow uh, this uh, this uh, terrorist to, to to be free, okay, it will be, it's it will be dangerous to to Israel to the to the Israeli people. And to to walk on the streets here, so so we are we are going to resist, okay? This uh, this deal, if uh, it's going to happen. I mean, it really is incredible, you know, and and it really speaks to to Kalal Israel, to to the nation of Israel, to to the Jewish collective here in Israel, and you know. I mean, can you talk a little bit? We have to sort of wind down. I know you have a very busy day ahead of you. Can you just give me your sense, really, about the the way that you see the state of Israel? Here you guys are. You built your home in Kiryat Arba, which is not a simple task. Uh, you are surrounded by very hostile people. You don't live very far from me in Efrat, but I mean, it, Kiryat Arba is is a difficult place. Uh, it's difficult to get there sometimes. You get shot at and everything on the roads. And and you you clearly have a sense of of a of a state and what it's supposed to do. What what does the state of Israel represent for you? What what do you think it's it does it have a mission? What what exactly do you how do you look at the state? Yes. 
in in our in in our family we we edu we educated our our uh, children that that Am Israel is the best thing in the world. Okay, we are living for Am Israel. We are not living for our lives. This is my clinic. You see, I'm not go I'm not going to work. Okay, to to make money. I don't care about money. I care about my nation, my my uh, nation's future, okay, and I I'm ready to sacrifice my life to my nation, and my my son, my dear son, Eitan, uh, was educated in this house, so I'm I know I'm surely know that he is standing with me with every word I'm saying here. Okay, and in a um, couple of months uh, before before uh, October seven, we're we're sitting in a uh, in Shein, Shein, uh, Shabbat in dinner, and they my uh, my children uh, asked me about a uh, shalit deal, so I told them uh, uh, all the things that uh, that happened here in Israel uh, twelve years years ago, and suddenly suddenly Eitan said. If I will uh, be kidnapped by in, in the service by Hezbollah or Hamas, I'm not allow you, okay, to to uh, to free me to rescue me, okay, for terrorists, okay. So Eitan said it to us, to his parents and to his brothers. Okay, it's amazing. The soul knows. Is that correct? That's, that is an incredible story. You're you're a you're a doctor. I forgot to even ask you before the conversation began. What it is that you you do? Yes, this is yeah, this is ADHD clinic. <laughs> yes, a lot of that going around these days. I tell you, if you didn't have to spend so much time trying to explain what you're telling me because of a time it's plight and and your ordeal, I'm sure you would be. Your business would have increased by a thousand percent. I know personally, it's awfully hard to focus on anything these days. Okay, we have to be strong. Okay, we don't have a choice because Israel is in a war, and the 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 win in the war, okay, is is the best important thing now. I agree. I think it, you're absolutely right, and I think that the 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 understanding that. We all have to be free for our hostages to be free is is really a fundamental point. And I thank you so much for to you and to and to your your comrades, your colleagues, your neighbors who are fighting this fight really, not just for your children, but for everybody. And I think you're right. The way to bring Eitan home is to win. It's to win for him, it's to win with him and 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 bring everybody home. Uh, with our country free again from this. Yes, we have to win for the next d generations. Right, well, God bless you and Hanukkah Samer to you and to your family and to the Lieberman family and to all of the families of all of the hostages. And, and uh, I, I'm sure you know, but you should know that uh, we're praying for you guys continuously. Thank you very much, Caroline, and Hanukkah Samer for, for all of Hanukkah. you. Thank you. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you. I'll see you again uh, in a couple of days. Take care. Hugs and more.